there my friends I just wanted to hop on here really quickly and just say I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving this past week was Thanksgiving so I hope you enjoyed your time whether if it was by yourself or with your family and friends I hope you enjoyed yourself and I was thinking about a lot of you guys so like I said I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and this week of meals that I'm sharing with you today they're all very simple easy throw together meals it was the holidays this past week so my life was kind of crazy so I hope you enjoy this video today to get us started off today we're going to be making these fish tacos so to begin I am using cod as the type of fish and it's about a pound of cod all together I just cut it into smaller pieces and you're just going to salt, pepper, and you're going to add a little bit of chili powder, garlic powder, and some paprika. You could also add some other seasonings if you want to, but those are the seasonings that I had on hand. I also added a little bit of some cumin. You'll see on one of these fillets of fish, I didn't add too much seasoning just because I wanted to keep it kind of mild for my daughter, Brindley. Over here to my saucepan, I have some avocado oil that I let get hot. And then I added our cod to it. I cooked this for about three to four minutes on each side. And then I flipped it. I only flipped it once just so it wouldn't fall apart. And then you want to make sure it is the internal temperature of 145 degrees at least. And then you know your fish is cooked. So I just removed it to a separate plate. Now I'm going to begin to cook up our corn tortillas. So onto this pan I added some avocado oil. I let that get hot and then I added in our tortillas. And I let these cook on each side for a couple of minutes and then I flipped them. And then there's your corn tortillas. They are crispy and delicious. Here is my plate of food. I just served my tacos with some guacamole, lettuce, some Spanish rice, and some refried beans. These came out so, so good. We love fish tacos. Now we're making probably one of the most simple but yet really delicious pasta recipes of all time. So to get this recipe started, I have 10 strips of bacon that I chopped into smaller pieces. Then I brought it over to my frying pan and I'm going to let this bacon crisp up. You do want it nice and crispy. That's just going to help in the flavor and the texture of this recipe. So once it is cooked with a slotted spoon, I just removed it to a separate plate lined with paper towel. I did keep all of the excess grease in my pan. To that same bacon grease in my pan, I'm adding about four to five cloves of garlic. This might seem weird at this point, but you gotta trust me, this recipe is really pretty good. So once that garlic is fragrant, I added in a fourth a cup of some olive oil, and I stirred this together for an additional minute or so. And then I did cook up about a half a pound of pasta on the side, and I reserved two and a half cups of that pasta water. So I just added in that two and a half cup cups of pasta water right then. Unfortunately, my pan was a little bit too small. While we were moving, I lost my big, huge saucepan from Utah. I don't know, some of you guys might remember it, but unfortunately I lost it. So now I had to transfer everything to this pot. So I added in my half a pound of pasta noodles along with that sauce, and I just mixed all of this together. Once it was all mixed together, you're going to add in your cooked up bacon. If you are new here, I do want to let you know all of these recipes are either written out in my description box below or I have a link. So if you want the exact recipe, that's where it will be. And here's my plate. I just served mine with some more bacon on top and Parmesan cheese. This recipe is unbelievably easy and good. Now we're making this garlic butter chicken and oh my, you will love this recipe. So in my saucepan, I melted down a tablespoon of butter along with a tablespoon of olive oil and I let that get hot. And then I added in my one pound of chicken breast. I cut this chicken breast to where it was almost like chicken tenderloins. So into smaller strips or you could use chicken tenderloins. I just didn't have any chicken tenderloins. Anyways, after I added that into my pan, I just seasoned it with some paprika and and pepper. 
You'll just want to cook this chicken completely through. I flipped it at the halfway mark. So it cooked on each side for about three to four minutes, I'd say. But of course, you just want your chicken to reach the internal temperature of 165 degrees. And if you don't have a meat thermometer yet, I do recommend purchasing one. Now that we do have our chicken completely cooked, I just added in an additional tablespoon of butter. We're going to make the sauce now if I didn't mention that. So then after I added that butter in, I added in three cloves of garlic and you're going to stir this around and let that garlic become fragrant. It will take you about 20 seconds. To ensure that this has plenty of flavor, I went ahead and added in one teaspoon of some Italian seasoning along with a half of a lemon. You could add in more lemon or less lemon, but I do recommend adding in fresh lemon. It will just give it so much flavor. Once the sauce becomes thicker, your meal is complete. This is ready to serve. Here's my plate. I just served mine with some quick and easy rice on the side and a side salad. This came out so good. It was just a nice way to make simple chicken taste amazing. If you happen to miss Friday's video, it was all about the Instant Pot, so I made a lot of Instant Pot meals this past week, so I wanted to throw one of them into this What's For Dinner video. So that's what we're doing. We're doing some Instant Pot taco soup. So to get started in my Instant Pot, I added four cups of some chicken broth along with one onion that I diced into smaller pieces and four cloves of garlic. I thought I had fresh lime on hand, but I just had this squeeze bottle of lime. You're gonna wanna add in two tablespoons of lime juice. Fresh is best, of course, but if you don't have fresh, the container will work just fine. And then you'll add in one teaspoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of some oregano, and then a teaspoon of salt and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. It's a lot of seasonings, but it's gonna make this soup really good. So you're gonna stir it all together and then you're gonna add in your chicken breast. My chicken breast was actually frozen because I am so bad at planning my meals ahead of time during the day. For the remainder of the ingredients that I added, I added one can of Rotel along with one can of drained and rinsed black beans and a can of drained and rinsed corn. This is going to go on high pressure in your Instant Pot for 20 minutes and then I did do a quick release. Now that our chicken is through cooking and our meal is complete, I remove the chicken breast and I'm going to be shredding it up into smaller pieces. I do want to mention if you want to make this into kind of like a creamy style taco soup, you're going to go ahead and throw in four ounces of cream cheese that you diced into cubes at this point along with our shredded chicken and you'll just stir it all together and let that cream cheese melt down nicely. But anyways, your meal is complete at this point. Here is my big bowl of soup. I just topped my soup with some tortilla chips, sour cream, and cheese. This truly came out so, so delicious. We love this. This would even be good with guacamole or some sliced avocado on top. Now we're making this turkey tetrazzini. If you don't have turkey, you could do some sliced up chicken. So to get this one started, you're gonna want three cups of either diced up cooked chicken into smaller pieces. I used turkey because we had plenty of leftover turkey from Thanksgiving. So I just chopped that up into cubes and then I brought it over to this bowl. Now you're gonna to wanna to chop up eight ounces of some mushrooms into smaller pieces. You could see these are already sliced mushrooms, but I like to slice mine even thinner. Just, I don't know, that's just my thing. I like to do that, but anyways, just slice up your eight ounces of mushrooms. Oh, 
over to my Dutch oven, I have a tablespoon of butter that I melted down along with a tablespoon of olive oil. And then I added in our sliced up mushrooms. You're gonna cook these mushrooms on a medium high setting for about eight to 10 minutes. Now that our mushrooms are all cooked, I just added in our half a cup of chicken broth and then I brought that up to a simmer and from there you're going to be adding in the remainder of your creamy ingredients. So I'm just adding in one can of cream of mushroom soup. If you don't care for cream of mushroom soup, you could add in any other type of cream of soup and it will work. And then I added in a half a cup of some regular old milk along with one cup of some sour cream. You'll also be adding in your seasonings at this point. So I just added in a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning. Then you're gonna whisk all of this together on a lower heat temperature for about a minute or two. You don't want this to boil, you just want everything to be heated through, and you want this sauce to be nice and smooth. Now I'm just adding in my six ounces of cooked up drained spaghetti noodles. I stirred this all together. Once everything was well combined, I added in our three cups of chopped up turkey. Once again, I stirred all of that to combine. Now we're gonna work on our breadcrumb mixture. So to this bowl, I added in a fourth a cup of some panko breadcrumbs, or you could use regular breadcrumbs, whatever your preference is. Then you'll add a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and a half a cup of some mozzarella cheese, and you'll just stir all of this together. I place this into a greased nine by 13 baking dish, just like this. And then I spread it out to the best of my ability. Right on the top, I added the panko breadcrumb and cheesy mixture. And then on top of that, I added some more sharp cheddar cheese just for some more yumminess. I added about half a cup of that. Anyways, this went into a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until the cheese was bubbly. Here it is out of the oven. This came out really super good. This is just a wonderful way to use up leftover turkey or chicken on hand. And this is such a good casserole. I think you would love it. And then for Thanksgiving, I wanted to show you a few pictures of my family. I didn't get any videos or anything like that, but this was our Thanksgiving dinner. We really enjoyed it. And my mom actually cooked most of this, which was so kind of her. She is a wonderful cook. And that is a wrap of another week of What's For Dinner. I hope you enjoyed it. And I have a question for you actually. If there are any types of videos that you would like to see on my channel, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I would always love to hear new video ideas because I get stuck on what type of videos I should make next. Anyways, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.